welcome friends as uh, we are coming to close of uh, this course and uh, in this particular session we are going to discuss some of the topics uh, which normally we discuss in the industrial engineering course. But uh, these are also very important topics for an operation manager. In our last session we discussed uh, some concepts uh, which are going to be the future of uh, operation manager like uh, we discussed about uh, just in time, we discussed about uh, lean manufacturing. But these concepts interestingly which we are going to discuss today are the basics of operation management and industrial engineering. These concepts came into existence when industrial revolution and particularly scientific management came into picture. F. W. Taylor who is considered to be the father of scientific management and his contemporaries particularly Gilberts those gave the concept of uh, time and motion study. They are some of the pioneers in the development of uh, various motion analysis of workers in the plant. At that time in the scientific management era the basic idea was how to improve the productivity of the plants, how to continuously run your plant so that you can take maximum output from the plants. And at that time in most of the European companies slaves from Asia, slaves from Africa used to work and therefore they were considered like machine. So, we expected that all human being is working as machine and uh, therefore, the concepts like work method analysis, work measurement etcetera came into picture. But over a period of time the development of uh, management philosophies took place and then after uh, some time of scientific management uh, a very important development took place uh, and that was a kind of revolutionary development uh, in the field of management uh, which came in the form of uh, human relation management where the examples of uh, Hathron experiment became a turning point that physical conditions are important for the performance. But psychological conditions are equally important for your productivity. If you do not focus on psychological conditions of the employees, you cannot achieve high productivity. And at that time people like Abraham Maslow came up with their philosophies of uh, need hierarchy. And nowadays in our organizations uh, we have a combination of uh, you can say scientific management and human relation management. We are thinking that by giving training we can improve the productivity of our employees and at the same time we also need to think their psychological well being. So, we are trying to do a kind of balancing act in the current period with respect to scientific management's development and the psychological developments. Now, in this particular session we are going to discuss some of the issues which are important with respect to analysis of uh, performance of an employee. And therefore, the title of the session is work method analysis, work measurement and learning curve. Let us see what are the important terminologies with respect to these things. The first is work method analysis. Now, when we are talking of work method analysis there are important things that is the job design often begins with an analysis of the overall operation. We have discussed a very important issue when we were discussing the two different types of layouts product and process layouts. In the product layout employees were involved 
all the time in very standard work. They were doing the same kind of work repetitively and therefore, they become highly skillful in their particular job. In case of process layout, they do multiple type of works. And each time work require, requirement may be a different one. So, today you are doing a different type of job, tomorrow you are doing a different type of job and therefore, your ability to do multiple type of jobs are required. Now, it is a matter of individual choice that sometime there are people who want to do a very good job in a very particular area. They want to remain all the time highly focused and there are, and there are people who may feel bored, who may feel monotonous, they may feel fatigued because they are continuously doing the repetitive type of job. So, there is a continuous debate that high standardization is good or bad. There are people who say that uh, standardization improves the skill and there are people who say that uh, more standardization reduces the morale of employees because there will not be any job enrichment, there will not be any kind of variety. So, if variety is not there, excitement will also not be there and if excitement is not there, you will have a problem of morale. Then there are people who support uh, this kind of uh, multiple work and they say that uh, people are doing, workers are doing different type of work. Uh, so, they are continuously challenged with respect to their creativity, with respect to their skills. Uh, so, they enjoy their work uh, because of the challenge, but all of us do not like challenges. Some of us want uh, very easy going life, that uh, life should like a very smooth flow of water there should not be any kind of uh, bumpy rides and some of us like bumpy rides. So, depending upon that uh, both these types of models are available in the organizations. So, the first important thing is uh, about the analysis of the overall operation that is known as uh, job design. Here two things are important, one is uh, method and the second is analysis analyzing the job. In the method analysis, how a job is done? What are the different uh, you can say steps involved in doing a particular job? For an example, you are uh, taking uh, pictures in a camera and uh, when you are taking pictures in a camera, what are the various steps involved in clicking a picture? So, if you are using a SLR camera. In that SLR camera, you know that uh, you have to set uh, shutter speed, you have to set the aperture, you have to set the focus point, uh, you need to have a proper combination of these three things, uh, then only you can have a good quality photograph. So, these are the various steps uh, which are required for clicking a photo that uh, these three parameters are properly set then only your photo will be appropriate. So, it can be a good source of productivity improvement that when you know that uh, whether your ISO is appropriate, whether the shutter speed is appropriate, whether the focus is appropriate, all these things are appropriate uh, then only you can have a good photograph. So, slowly and slowly you understand that how to make how to make a balance in these various parameters and that will help you in uh, improving the job. So, some photographers are very good, some photographers are not so good because of their ability to make a balance appropriate balance uh, with respect to these things. Then analyzing the job, analyzing and improving methods is facilitated by the use of various charts, 
such as flow process charts, worker machine charts, etc. Now, in doing the job, we have two very important components. One component is worker and the second component is tool. This is machine, this is worker. Now, when the worker and machine is appropriately interacting, when worker has to perform, when machine has to perform and based on that, we have different types of chart that what is the sequence, how both these things are simultaneously working. We have different types of uh, charts and these charts are helpful in analyzing the job and with the help of this analysis of the job which you are doing, then you are able to see that what are the value adding activities you are doing and what are the non value activities you are doing. And that is something related to our previous lecture also, where we discussed JIT and lean. All those non value adding activities which you are doing in your job, these need to be eliminated and then your system will become a lean system. So, this analysis the job, analyzing the job that is also important from the lean manufacturing's point of view, because when the flow process diagram is available, you can identify non value adding activities. Now, these flow process chart and worker machine chart, these are the part of uh, analyzing the job and these are used to examine the overall sequence of an operation by focusing on movements of the operator or flow of material. That how material is flowing from one stage to another stage or in case a worker is moving. So, how the worker is moving from one place to another place. So, like in a restaurant, in a service organization, we have uh, this flow process chart a very useful information about the movement of your employees, because to provide service employees need to move from one place to another place. So, how employees are moving from one place to another place, this will help you by flow process chart. Similarly, in a manufacturing organization, the flow of material is taking place from input stage to various intermediate stages and then to the finished stage. So, that flow of material can also be tracked with the help of this flow process chart. Then the in flow process chart either it will be the movement of operator or the material. The worker machine chart is a combination of both these things that you have a chart to determine portions of a work cycle during which an operator and equipment are busy or idle. That the process is starting at uh, time t 0 and then up to t 10 worker is busy, then worker has set the machine during this time. Now, from t 10 to t 20 machine is busy, here worker plus machine both are busy here only machine is busy because now, now the machine is operating you have set the machine. For an example, you must have seen a washing machine in your homes. Now, in the washing machine in your home, when you are starting the washing machine initially, so you are setting the washing machine at a particular uh, cycle depending upon the cloths you are going to wash and during that period, you are also busy machine is also busy because you are doing that operation on the machine. After that you switch down the machine and let us say it is a cycle of uh, 60 minutes. So, from T 10 to 60 minutes that is up to T 70 only machine is busy. Now, you are free the worker is free worker is idle because machine is operating on its own you have to do nothing. Then after 70 minutes uh, buzzer beeps up and for another 10 minutes you need to take cloth out from the machine. So, again worker plus machine both are busy. So, in this case machine is busy for about 80 minutes and worker is busy 
for only 20 minutes. So, that type of information you will understand from worker machine chart that uh, how much time machine is busy and how much time worker is busy. When we are doing this kind of uh, recording of work, so during this time camera is also busy and worker that is me I am also busy. But when the recording is not happening, only worker is busy in preparing the charts, in preparing these materials at that time camera is free. So, if how much duration you want to capture depending upon that uh, worker machine chart will give you idea that how much time worker is busy and how much time machine is busy, how much time worker is idle, how much time machine is idle. So, that is also a very useful chart in analyzing the jobs. Then for preparing these flow diagrams, these charts, the commonly used symbols in the process charts, these are some commonly used symbols. This indicates the inspection, this is operation, this is transportation, this uh, D, the reverse D for representing the delay and this is for storage. One more symbol like uh, star type that is for some kind of decision making. So, these are the commonly used symbols uh, for uh, various uh, activities in your flow process charts. And based on that, uh, like uh, for an example, I can show you that uh, we have uh, the storage of raw material. From here, the raw material is moving, that is the transportation. This is uh, shown like this way. Then, some operation is taking place. After operation, again, some transportation and then inspection is taking place. After inspection, again some operation is taking place and then you are storing them in a finished goods store. So, this is a type of uh, flow process chart where two operations are taking place and in between of two operations uh, you are taking a kind of inspection. Now, in inspection you can also have uh, you this is one type of diagram. Let me make one more diagram so that you understand the variations in the diagram. Now, in the second diagram, I have inserted one decision making step also. After the inspection, it is going to decision making and if the inspection says that yes, it is ok, then it is going for the next operation. If it is not ok, then it is going back to previous operation, operation 1 and it will be reprocessed and again it will be through inspection stage. So, like uh, you are having first year, after first year you are going through examination, that examination is a kind of inspection, then the result preparation takes place. In the result preparation if you are pass, then you go to next semester, next year and if you are not pass, if you are failed, then you go back to the previous class. So, that is a kind of system which is uh, possible and uh, that is how we can use these symbols uh, for preparing our flow process diagrams. Then another important thing in this uh, work study is uh, motion study. When we are performing a job, we need to have some kind of motions. Motions means movements. In uh, our last session of GIT and lean, we discussed uh, about uh, extra movements that is a waste. If you are moving too much that is a waste. 
So, we need to do our movements very very carefully, so that you can work for longer duration without fatigue and for that purpose this motion study is being performed, so that you can have a very optimum level of productivity. So, systematic study of the human motions used to perform an operation. When you are driving the steering which you are holding that is a very important result of motion study. What should be the angle of your back that is again an example of motion study. When you are dive, driving a scooter, when you are driving bicycle, when you are driving cycle rickshaw. So, what should be the optimum angle of holding those handles that is again an example of motion study. So, that you can work for longer duration without any damage to your body. So, the purpose is to eliminate unnecessary motions and to identify the best sequence of motions for maximum efficiency. So, the idea is to get the maximum efficiency and eliminate all unnecessary motions. Now, in the case of uh, uh, this motion study, we have uh, important things like uh, motion study principles, thermics, which are very important and very old also. Now, uh, we are in around 2020 and uh, the concepts are around 100 years old and in this 100 year we have seen that uh, how much development have taken place with respect to IT and uh, nowadays various other aspects of computing, but still the concepts of thermics are important for motion study. How to minimize your unnecessary movements for that if still we want to go for any kind of study the concepts are based on the thermics. Then the micro motion study where we use a camera which is able to shoot the performing jobs at a very slow rate and later on by using our videos by using our computers we try to analyze the movement of our employees and then obviously the uh, charts etcetera are also important. When we are talking of uh, thermics, thermics have classified the human motions into some basic elemental motions and uh, these are the basic elemental motions and uh, various other kind of motions are also combination of these uh, basic thermics only and these uh, basic thermics are search, find, select, grasp, hold, transport loaded, transport empty, release load, inspect, position, assemble, use, disassemble, preposition, unavoidable delay, avoidable delay, plan, rest all these are the basic type of thermics. So, we are not going into the details of these thermics, but uh, these are the basic type of motions uh, and uh, all other motions are actually the combination of uh, these basic thermics etcetera. So, these thermics help us uh, in analyzing the human motions uh, with respect to any particular job. If your motions, if your motions cannot be classified under any of these thermics or a combination of these thermics that to some extent I can say is a wasteful motion that motion can be avoided. Only these basic motions cannot be avoided because these are considered to be important, these are considered to be necessary for completing the job, but other motions are not so important and uh, other motions uh, which are not possible to fall under this category can be avoidable. Then another important thing in the case of uh, motion study is micro motion study. Micro motion study is uh, a very very useful uh, tool and uh, it gives you lot of suggestion. Nowadays particularly in the field of sports you find tremendous use of micro motion study because of uh, good technologies available in uh, cricket we see the use of uh, DRS the third umpire 
and that is a type of example of micro motion study that uh, how the ball is moving at a very slow speed that you are able to track and on the basis of that you make your final decisions whether a player is out or not out whether it is a 6 or not a 6. So, all these type of decisions in football also we make some time decisions based on micro motion study. Another very important example in particularly all those uh, 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter races we see that uh, many a time it is a photo finish when two players, two athletes are very close at the finishing line and by naked eye you are not able to see the difference between first and second or second and third then you use micro motion films to decide which player was by fraction of seconds ahead of other players. So, maybe up to 1 upon 2000th, 1 upon 2000th fraction of minute we are able to shoot under the micro motion study and uh, this is uh, going to be of extremely useful in analyzing the job and in motion study analysts often use charts as tools for analyzing and recording motion studies. So, different type of uh, uh, motion study charts are also there and in addition to these activity charts and process charts analysts may also use SIMO chart which are simultaneous motion charts. So, like uh, when my left hand is doing something what my right hand is doing at that time, when my both hands are doing something what my legs are doing at that time. So, the simultaneous movement of my various body parts uh, is being studied in SIMO uh, analysis. So, uh, in uh, many cases you find that uh, people are ambidextrous and when people are ambidextrous uh, their two hands can do two different things simultaneously, but uh, many of us do not have that type of quality and if my one hand is involved in writing other hand is stationary. So, can be developed can be developed by training some kind of skill when my one hand is doing some work uh, the other hand is also be productive like an example of that uh, is your swing machine. So, in that uh, swing machine we are using both our hands and legs simultaneously for doing the job. So, most of the body parts and eyes are also continuously watching the performance. So, almost all the body parts are simultaneously involved in the job, but in many jobs you will see that only either one hand, one leg or only eyes are involved other body parts are not involved. That means, you are not able to take complete advantage of your entire body part. Then Another important thing is work measurement. The work measurement is concerned with determining the length of time a job should take to complete it and uh, that is very interesting with the help of micro motion studies uh, with the help of other kind of uh, work analysis we calculate this uh, uh, time to complete a particular activity. You know that uh, across the globe the lunch hours are normally for 1 hour. Now, how did we decide that lunch hour should be of 1 hour? So, this is a scientific study that a person can finish lunch in 15 minutes then how much time he needs to rest before he can go again for work and therefore, this is a very good example a common example across the sectors about the lunch hours. You will find that in most of the cases lunch hours is of 1 hour exactly and that is a result of work measurement studies. Now, in the work measurement studies there are different types of time estimates. These are not that time estimates which we discussed in our part class. The first time estimate is standard time. In the standard time, the amount of time it should take a qualified worker to complete a specified task working at a sustainable trade using given methods, tools and equipment, raw material and workplace arrangement. Now, a properly trained worker without any kind of uh, extra rest 
or without any kind of extra pace, no rest, no extra pace. So, at a normal speed, the worker is working for long duration. So, how much time in that particular situation the worker is taking to complete the job that is the standard time. And for that purpose most commonly used methods are a stopwatch time study whenever you are doing a particular task we prepare the log books using the stopwatch time study. There is a particular engineer who keeps watching you that how you are performing and how much time you are taking every time and uh, that data is being recorded in a log book. The historical times uh, how much time you to used to took uh, in uh, previous week or previous month, previous year. So, that is the historical data. Then predetermined data that uh, can you complete the job in this much time and then we take some sampling, some random sampling we do uh, without telling the workers we will uh, some time because uh, when workers are being watched and uh, they know that somebody is watching them, uh, they become cautious and uh, therefore, uh, they will always like to perform at their best speed. So, sometime we do the sampling also uh, random sampling, so that uh, when they are working on a regular basis, uh, what is their performance. Then in this particular case, the first type of time is the observed time OT. And in this observed time, the observed time is simply the average of recorded time. So, you have recorded the time for 5 continuous activities for a particular worker. So, the sigma x i divided by n that is the observed time. Then the second is normal time. The normal time is the observed time adjusted for workers performance. Now, some worker is a good worker, some worker is not so good worker. So, you give the performance rating to each of your worker. So, the observed time is multiplied with the performance rating. So, if some worker is uh, not a good worker, so you will give a lower performance rating and then uh, uh, you will find that uh, this worker uh, this time is uh, uh, not the normal time. And on the basis of the performance rating, when you multiply it with the observed time, you get the normal time. And then we have a standard time which comes after the normal time. The standard time is normal time does not take into account factors like personal delays, unavoidable delays or rest breaks. So, the rest standard time for a job is the normal time multiplied by an allowance factor for these delays that you can give an allowance of 5 percent, 10 percent, 20 percent and when you are multiplying that allowance factor into your normal time, you get the standard time. So, you have two types of systems, one is allowance factor for job that is 1 plus a, where a is allowance percentage based on job time and then another system is allowance factor for the day that is 1 upon 1 minus a, where allowance a is now the allowance percentage based on work day. Now, let us see one example with the help of which we will understand the calculation of observed time, normal time and the standard time. So, in this case an assembly operation for 30 cycles and then computed the average time per cycle which is 18.77. So, average time per cycle is 18.75 minutes. The analyst assigned a performance rating of 0.96 performance rating of 96 percent and decided that an appropriate allowance of 15 percent and this allowance factor is based on the entire work day. So, you have to determine the observed time, normal time and the standard time. So, let us see the calculation. The observed time is the average time that is already given to you that is 18.75. 
then comes the normal time that is observed time into the performance rating. Since the worker is not a good performing worker, its rating is not 100 percent. So, you will see that uh, it becomes uh, obvious to understand that the nor this worker has taken more than the normal time. So, 80.75 multiplied by the performance rating of 96, uh, you get the normal time of 18 minutes. The work should have been completed in 18 minutes, but the worker took 18.75. Now, you have to add, you have to add means you have to include the allowance factor also and allowance factor is calculated on work day basis and therefore, A f becomes 1 upon 1 minus A and that is 15 percent is the allowance factor. So, this value comes 1.176. So, N T into A f 18 into 1.176 that is 21.17. This is the standard time. So, you expect that in 21.17 minutes a normal worker should complete the job, a normal worker should complete the job in 21.17 minutes. So, we get the calculation for overtime, we get the calculation for NT, we get the calculation for allowance factor. Here it is important to know that the value of A was 15 percent and here the how to have this value of 15 percent the role of uh, your IR policies, your HRM, trade unions all these are very important component in deciding the allowance factor. Because as organization I want to give as minimum allowance factor as possible as trade unions uh, they want uh, as high allowance factor as possible. So, there has to be a proper negotiation, proper balance about the allowance factor and that is how A is decided and on the basis of A, A f is decided. So, this is about the calculations of various time standards which we use for our studies in this case of work measurement and work analysis. With this, we come to end of this session. Thank you very much.